Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here, and we got a list of 13 properties on the Toronto system, two on the Oakville Milton system. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, Mattamy did the release this weekend. I got a call from a couple clients saying, you know, I put a, a reserve on, on this home. What do you think? When I looked at the price and sometimes even the floor plan, I didn't like the floor plans at all. The kitchens were small. You can't see that stuff because it's on a two dimensional object that's nowhere near the real size. But I really started dissecting and analyzing, and I thought, this is not a layout that's any better than anything that's out there in fact possibly even worse and uh, and the pricing wasn't good and I've always believed with new homes you can't sell the cake mix for more than the cake and so that was a great example by my friend David Fleming in Toronto uh, great realtor out there and so he basically compared the two and if the builders are charging more for the cake mix it just doesn't make sense we sent out an email on the weekend talking about the advantages and disadvantages of new versus resale and the way the best way to describe it is if you buy a new car you pay for the air tax and the delivery and and all that stuff and it's the same on a new home you're paying uh town levies you're paying for the warranty the the driveway deposit you're paying for tree planting utility hookups all these extra costs there that the builder doesn't really always tell you uh never mind fencing air conditioning window coverings appliances that kind of stuff is uh is not always mentioned and so what you find is the net dollars that you spend can be a lot higher than what the sticker price is and the other thing is there's the uncertainty of closing and so on when you buy a used car for example you can pick up the nav system which someone else paid three or four grand for it might only cost you 500 to 1500 dollars to buy it on a on a used car so anyway if uh, if you were a part of that and you want me to review something i know a lot of times there's a couple days cooling off period where you have a chance to uh, to go back and deliver the deposit and everything else. Uh, if you need me to review anything, I will let you know. I'm not afraid to tell you, yes, it's a good idea, go ahead. And I'm not afraid to tell you it's maybe not in your best interest to do so. And, uh, and I'd be glad to do that. Okay, so let's get started with today's list. What I do is I click this price button right here so I order them from low to high. When, whenever we do a multi-day thing off the weekend, we find that the prices are a little bit jumbled up. So Costkin starts us off 369. This particular unit is on the ground floor plus the basement, and then there's another unit above you. So you're basically unit above and unit beside. And this one's on the end, so you don't have another unit here, but you are surrounded by other uh, units. So you've got a main floor master, and then you've got two bedrooms downstairs. This is one of the bedrooms. And there's your basement bathroom. That's what you. That's your rec room, basically, and master. And then you've got uh, the main floor is the living room plus the kitchen. And I guess this could work maybe for someone who has older kids that want to go downstairs. They've got their own area to play video games. For most people, though, I would say, is it better to buy like maybe a two plus one condo? Because this one still has condo fees. That's the troubling part about this listing. It's listed as a freehold, but it has like $120 in fees. So I think it's misleading. I think a lot of people are going to come to this one. It says condo townhouse in the description, but the category that this one's in, attached road townhouse, doesn't indicate that there's any extra fee. And so... I could see a lot of people, I hope they're not surprised they don't put an offer in and are not aware of those condo fees. But when you add that in, you say, is it really the best option for me? Uh, I'll give you another example a little bit later on. So this one on 100 mil side, 339, uh, 1135 square feet. We've got condo fees here, are probably between five and $700, but they include more. They include your heat and your hydro, and you've got a pool there, and you've got cable TV that's included. So there's really not a lot of extra costs beyond your phone and your property taxes. So it's, uh, it's a popular choice with the 50 plus crowd. No balconies in these units. So that's the one thing that some people would like to see is they actually want some outdoor space. Sky Suites are the top floor of this building. Uh, they are known as being very, called, I don't want to say prestigious, but they're known as, as being pretty desirable in this building. They've done some nice upgrades in the kitchen. And uh, it does have some older elements to it, but at 339, we've seen renovated places go for 360 to 400 thousand dollars, and so there is some room in here to uh, to make some improvements and have a really nice place. Uh, the other thing that may be helpful is that there's two parking spaces here. A lot of times with condos, you only find one parking spot, 
And depending on how the lifestyle is for the people moving into this, uh, they may want that extra spot. Close to downtown, it's known as a good building and you've got good facilities here. And it seems to be a pretty close-knit group of people who live in here. So 974 Thompson, 385 nine, three bedroom, two washrooms. So there's only one bathroom, one full bathroom on the second floor. It does have a finished basement. This is the layout here. It's in Amesbury. So you walk in, there's basically one main floor room. You could do a small dining table here plus the family room. Sometimes this is all open. Sometimes there's, there's a, um, it, this this little sort of middle wall right here. Uh, most of the kitchen is on this side. There are some that have an island right here and uh, completely open between the two rooms. Entrance from the garage and you can bring your groceries easily into the kitchen. Three bedrooms upstairs plus you've got that one bathroom. Pretty big ensuite closet here and uh, usually the basement is just one big open room. It's a smart idea when you finish these ones to put the third bathroom down in the basement. I don't know, it's Thompson, you take a bit of a hit there on value. It seems a little bit high. It says it has granite, granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, and if it's a really well done finished basement, there's an outside chance, strictly based on the fact there's not a lot for sale right now, that they could do well with this one. It seems a little bit high to me. We've seen homes even larger than this with a second bathroom upstairs that sell for around this price. Uh, Gaisley Circle's 439. It's uh, just over 1,700 square feet. It's called a Spring Ridge model. And really, if your life depended on selling a home, would you want that to be the first shot that people see? I just don't think it's dressed too impressed. It doesn't really show you anything. It's a table. It's dark. The pictures on this one are all vertical. I don't know why the camera couldn't turn around because you'd actually see more of the kitchen if it was turned around. And uh, I just think the presentation really sucks on this. You get a big gaping to or, uh, toilet open there. Yeah, I uh, oh, blurry pictures. I mean, it's just pretend like you're trying. Okay, 439 is uh, is still a bit high for this model. They're asking for, I would say, the high side of fair for, for what I'd consider that model to sell for. And they're just putting zero effort into the picture. So Dow Landing's 489. Semi-detached, it's a lot larger than the previous one. It's probably between 2,000 and 2,200 square feet, plus a finished basement. It looks like there might even be a separate entrance from the garage going right into the basement, uh, which I know this builder did offer. And as far as I know, it's a big open concept layout. Uh, you know, it's on the high side of what I think this should sell for. Um, it is a lot of living space though. 489, it's possible if it's nice inside. It doesn't look like it has a lot of upgrades. There's Broadloom, which is carpet uh, in the living room here. So we'll see what happens. Wait for the photos. They're updated in real time uh, down below in the link. We've got a couple builder homes, none of which I think are, are great value. They don't jump out as being outstanding. 5099, uh, we've got 1774 square feet. It's linked by the garage, so no matter how you slice it, it's still a semi-detached home. People like the fact that it's a slight upgrade from a, a semi-detached because there's no interior walls. It's just linked by the garage. A 30-foot wide lot is actually not too bad at all, so I bet you the, the layout on the main floor is, uh, is good because now you've sort of slid the home over this way. The garage isn't taking up as much of the floor plan all good things. 509 though really for an attached home at 1774 square feet is high. Okay so we got this one on Liederman at 515. It's a 1600 square foot home. They've closed the loft upstairs to make a fourth bedroom but at 1600 square feet for detached at 515 I don't see it happening. Uh, Haas, there's another one on Haas. So this one's a little bit bigger, 1938 square feet. So you're about 150 square feet larger than the 509 one, and you're at 519. Again, doesn't really blow me away. There's granite counters. You've got some money to spend from the builder. I'd rather say take $5,000 off, uh, but they've included that in the price. And I guess you can choose your own finishes and this and that. Uh, another one here at 529, which actually this one is really not much bigger than the previous, but they want $10,000 more. Not sure where the extra 
uh, 10,000 really gets absorbed on this one. And then you've got McGibbon, which is 659 for a 2387 square foot home, just on a 36 foot lot. So you figure the garage is pretty close to 20 feet. You've got uh, setbacks on both sides. How much room is really here? That room can't be more than 10 feet wide for sure, especially with an entrance right here. Uh, although that is a corner, so I bet you come in off the side. Anyway, you can find 2,400 square foot homes on the resale end for like $600,000. So I, I don't really see what the argument is, why someone would pay this, plus all the other stuff, put it on builder's forms, which are, you know, you've got to get a lawyer to review and all the rest of it. I just think, that, I mean, they're probably asking in my eyes 30 to 40,000 more than what I, I would even consider on the outside end of fair. McLaughlin at 719 doesn't say the size of this one. 43 by 100 foot is a nice uh, property. You've got a uh, you've got some green space behind with a pond. Home itself doesn't really blow you away, but the thing I'm not sure of is how big this home is. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that one. Megan is 820. It uh, it looks like a Madame home. It's a Stanbury. Pretty sure it's a Stanbury, at 3,600 square feet. It says approximately 4,000 square feet. Uh, it could be. It looks like the Stanbury from from my perspective, but it could be a different model. A couple of them have this turret with the uh, the driveway behind. You've got a park right here. You've got some park behind. 820. Uh, it says it's a partly finished basement, but there's really nothing that I see in terms of finished room space down below in the description. Uh, I don't know, seems a little high to me. Amos is a, uh, I think this is a really nice home. It's only three bedrooms, which might be the thing holding it back. Triple garage, it's up on a hill, so you actually look down, there's some good privacy here. Um, you're close to a, uh, a very good school at uh, Brookfield Public School right at Guelph and 15. There's a lot of things that you could walk to from this house, which is nice. Um, you've got the wainscoting, you get the waffle ceiling here with little pot lights inside. Uh, the built-ins, the kitchen looks nice. You know, you've got an eat-in here with the bay window. There's uh, there's a, a little main floor room that I think is, is pretty handy, a little breezeway room. It's a nice home. So that area right there, you could kind of build out a little room. Uh, I like this home a lot. I think it's got a lot to offer, and I think the price is good too. I mean, there's some real junky stuff in, in these estate homes for nine hundred or a million dollars. Eight eighty nine, I think, is uh, is is the right price for this one. And uh, so we've got two more. We've got this one on Dairy Road. Okay, so we're moving over to the Oakville list. It's basically a Brent Ridge end. You know, about thirteen hundred square feet. It's the only model that has the Eden kitchen here. And uh, we talked about this particular complex at 6020 Dairy. Uh, there is a condo fee of about $90. We talked about it last week. That's a substantial amount. That's on a mortgage. You could probably add 15,000 to the price and that's, that would be your monthly payment. Um, 350, it seems like it's around market value, but then when you add that condo fee, it's hard to get in and out of this too. I think the builder's fixing that. Uh, because there's not a wide enough space to uh, to allow two cars to get in and out, but it's still it wouldn't be my favorite choice. And this last one here on Main Street, it's about two acres. It's an awesome location, and if you look inside, it's mostly land value, but it's got a ton of land. And I'll show you what they mean. So if you read in the the escarpment, it says it's under the NEC, and so you need approval. So the minute you cross outside town lines. Uh, th there's defined boundaries and you get into the escarpment zone they're the people who really can tell you if your plans are allowed or not so this is all escarpment protected so you, if you look here uh, Tremaine Road and then you've got roads like Savaline Scott and if you notice really this is I, I mean that's why Milton's not growing west is because it's all protected land that's why the next phase is going south so where this property is so there's Main Street right there and then it dips down, it goes across here. And so the thing about 
this, so the, the property is right around here. So you're, you're sort of between the escarpment rural and the escarpment protected. And so you definitely need that approval. So if you want to do something on this home, probably what you do is you put an offer in, you put it conditional on getting approval for your, your plans, and then you can firm the deal up after to buy it and then have that unknown if the escarpment protection is actually gonna improve the plans, I think would be kind of silly. And the house itself looks like it's a little bit older. So the land value for that amount of size is, uh, is amazing. There's a park being built. Whoops, just flip the screen here. Big community park right here. Uh, there's there's um, you know some some natural gas and all the rest of it. Town water, where it doesn't necessarily feel like a rural, but you're getting some of the benefits of being in a zone that's considered rural. I love this location. I think um, I think Given Lane and that little strip on Main is going to be a very desirable area in the future. But you just want to be really careful with the NEC. I don't think they're they're uh, completely. Uh, I don't think they're so restrictive that you can't do anything, but you do want to make sure you can do what you want. Anyway, that's the list for today, and the offer still stands. If you want to give me a call and talk about some of the stuff that Mattamy's put out or any of the other builders, of which I don't think there's many beyond just Mattamy and then these Tiffany Park ones that were released, let me know. I'll give you the honest, uh, the honest truth. Okay, so have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.